So now we will begin with our panel. And uh, the first one will be Damali Abrams. Just a little bit about Damali. She is a video performance artist living and working in New York. Although on the flyer I put that she's from Philadelphia, my mistake, sorry. Uh, she received a BA from NYU and an MFA from the Vermont College of Fine Arts. She is the 2009-2010 AIR Fellowship recipient. Her ongoing video performance project, Self-Help Self TV, has been screened in Florida, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, New York, and Vermont. She is part of the artist collective TART and participated in the Badass Women Festival of 2006 in the Bronx and much more. Okay, Damali. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on. Damali, speak loud. Okay. I'm going to be focusing on three feminist artists who began working in the 70s and showing their work and mine and how their work has influenced my work. Um, the three artists are Linda Montano, Adrian Piper, and Anna Mendieta. Um, and their work embodies the feminist premise that the personal is political, which is very important to my current practice. Um, their, their work has had a tremendous influence on mine, so I thought the easiest way to show it would be to show images of their work and then mine. Um, so this is a Linda Montano piece from 19, um, 1983 to 1984. Linda was tethered to Te Ching Se, for an entire year, they were tethered together. I'm sorry, <laughs> tethered together by an eight-foot rope, and um, but they were not allowed to touch each other for the entire year. A lot of Linda Montano's work is endurance work, and uh, she came to a point in her process where she decided that her entire life is her art, and uh, she said, "Living art was incredibly exhilarating. I called each day art and not life." So after studying Linda's work, that's how I approach my own art and life, and I don't make any distinction between my art and life. I process information and experiences through my art. This is a video that I made with Linda Montano called Walking with Linda Montano, um, a performance interview piece where we walked for about 20 blocks through the city talking about performance arts and self-help and the impact of performance art on one's life. Okay, so um, this is a postcard from a piece I did called Autobiography of the Year. For um, every day of 2009, I recorded video diaries and I made a video installation of them. So for this postcard, I just pulled out 12 of those images. Um, as I began recording myself daily, I realized that it wasn't gonna be visually interesting if every day I just wore my sweats at the end of the day and recorded myself. So I began to wear costumes and play with different backgrounds. This is an installation view. This uh, exhibit was at AIR Gallery, which was the first women's gallery in the country. And um, I edited the... Uh, the video diary entries from 2009, I edited them into the four quarters of the year. Um, and this piece is by Adrienne Piper. Um, Adrienne Piper is a black woman artist who's still working today. And um, one issue that she continued to have is that because she's very light and a lot of people don't realize that she's black when they meet her, so a lot of people would make racist remarks in her presence, not realizing that she's a black woman. So this was a series that she did uh, from 1986 to 1990 called My Calling Card Number One. Mm -hmm. And anytime a white person would make a racist remark in her presence, she would give them these cards that say, I'm sure you did not realize this when you made, laughed at, or agreed with that racist remark. In the past, I have attempted to alert white people to my racial identity in advance. <laughs> Unfortunately, this invariably causes them to react to me as pushy, manipulative, <laughs> or socially inappropriate. Therefore, my policy is to assume that white people do not make these remarks, even when they believe there are no black people present, and to distribute this card when they do. I regret any discomfort my presence is causing you, just as, I'm sh just as I am sure you regret the discomfort your racism is causing me. <laughs> For this piece, um, 
you, it's, I uh, apologize for the fuzzy image, but um, this is her, part of Adrian Piper's Mythic Being series, which was from 1972 to 1975, where she would uh, dress as a man and go out into public spaces. And each month she would publish an ad in the voice, Village Voice classified section. And um, when she would do these performances, she would repeat, even though she was dressed as a man, she would walk down the street like repeating uh, segments of her journals that she'd been keeping since she was a child. So she would be um, saying things that like a 12 year old girl would write in her journal as she's walking down the street dressed as a man. And then she would uh, take out these ads in the Village Voice each month and uh, the text is from her journal. It says, today was the first day of school. The only decent boys in my class are Robbie and Clyde. I think I like Clyde. <laughs> Um, and this is one of my own journal entries um, from 1992, um, because I also use journal, my own journals in my work. Um, I have 20 years of journals now, and I'm turning them into a book. I began keeping them in 1990, and I'm using them to write a book, and as I started typing them, I decided to also start performing passages from my own journals. So this is one of the passages from my journals and when I was 13. I've been reading a, this book called How to Think Like a Winner by James C. Lewis, and it has given me the power to win, et cetera. <laughs> That's the next one. Um, this is Anna Mendieta's Naningo Burial from 1976. Anna Mendieta was born in Cuba in 1948, and she came to the US in 1961 at the age of 12 uh, with Operation Peter Pan, which was funded by the US Catholic Church and the CIA to bring um, Cuban children away from Castro's regime. And um, though the parents of the Cuban children thought that they were saving their children, she wound up uh, going to Iowa and going to all of these really racist Catholic schools and abusive foster homes. Um, and that wound up influencing a lot of the work that she created later. Um, this is from her Silhouetta series that is from 1973 to 1980 where she would use her body to create the shape of a woman. Sometimes she, used, she was actually in the image. Sometimes she would just use the shape of her own body. Um, and this one was surrounded by candles. Sometimes it would be gunpowder. Sometimes there would be blood. Sometimes there would be flowers. And she would do it um, either in public spaces or out in nature. Um, this one was inside of a gallery. And this is a still from one of my own videos called me and where I was surrounded by candles in the same way that Mendieta uh, created that silhouette in her series. Um, and also, this piece was influenced by Anna Mendieta and Adrian Piper. This was my first music video. Um, I use hip hop music in a lot of my work the same way Adrian Piper had a series called Funk Lessons from 1982 to 1984. It was a series of performances where she taught mostly white audiences in galleries and other spaces how to dance to funk music <laughs> because um, she realized that, um, you know, a lot of people tended to look down on funk music and not really see it as a valid art form. And similarly, I like to use hip hop music because a lot of people don't see it as a valid art form. So I like to bring it into gallery spaces to show that it is just as valid as any of the other art that is in the gallery space. So that's it. Thank you.